Hello, now we are doing industrial control circuit troubleshooting 1, fourth module. Now we are doing genius skill test number 8. The work order that we received stated that the previous group was actually working on this system but was unable to repair the system properly and was reassigned to do another job. So what is the problem? Let's dive in. Okay, we can see visually check from the external devices and the circuit we notice that there's no lighting on the control panel usually because of EMO press now we list of EMO still the same and maybe there the fuse has blown or maybe there's no power the power switch was turned off you can see the power switch the main power supply was cut off so we need to switch it on there's a power here now we drain the fluid from the vessel and we run the process and try to observe for any anomaly from the process. Okay, start the process. Okay, now intake one lighting is on. That means the S1 solenoid valve is energized to open. So the water will go inside the tank. Now intake 2, lighting is on and the water flow through the tank via the S2. However, when the water level reach 85%, it did not proceed to the next stage as per usual. Okay, agitator lighting did not turn on. What is wrong? But the heater lighting is turned on after 5 seconds. By looking at the circuit that we know, okay, <clears throat> when this S1, okay, the S1 solenoid valve is energized and water will flow through the tank via the S1 solenoid valve until 40%. Then the X2 solenoid valve will be energized until the water reach 80%. Okay, when water reach 85%, this closed switch 3 will trigger close mechanically and the current will flow through this path to energize R3 relay coil and this will result R3 relay coil relay switch to close and the current can flow through this path to energize R6 relay coil and at the same time it will trigger the R6 relay switch here to close and R6 relay switch here to open okay once it is open there's no current flow through this two parallel circuit right okay <clears throat> so when this trigger to close the current will flow through this path and then go inside this parallel circuit okay the current will supply to energize this mc or agitator contactor coil energize the agitator lighting and energize tr1 tr1 stand for timer relay one it's just a relay but with timer or delay the delay setting is set by the user example in this case user set it five seconds meaning after five seconds it will be turned on it will energize okay since there's the agitator lighting is not turned on and the mc or agitator contactor coil is not energized that's why no current flowing through the ac three phase circuit and supply to agitator the agitator do not turn on to run that's why we do not hear any sound from the agitator running okay however we notice that heater lighting is turned was turned on after five seconds it means there's a current flowing through here meaning this tr1 switch is actually closed it closed because tr1 relay was energized so meaning there's a current flowing through this circuit via ol1 overload relay one okay so what is wrong here is that, can it be because there's no current flowing to the mc or agitator contactor coil and agitator lighting yes possible there is a current flowing to the tr1 that's why it, it is able to energize and trigger this switch to close okay so we need to check the for any opening circuit or loose termination somewhere between here and here 
So we need to count the power supply and start to check from OL110. Okay, count the power supply, perform the lockout takeout, verify the lockout takeout is done properly. And then we need to check here for any loose termination and check any open circuit. So you can take the screwdriver and check there is no open circuit. Okay, so by looking at the wiring diagram OL110 here, okay, OL110, here, OL1. Current flow from OL19 to 10. Current flow from OL19 to 10. So just now we check here, point 10, there's no loose connection. Okay, when the current flow from point 9 to point 10, it plunges out into two paths. One path to the MCA, agitator contactor point A, and one path to the TB118. TB118 is here. Let's check this one for any loose connection or any open circuit on the wiring. Okay, so we check MC or agitator contactor point A. Yes, there's a loose connection. Okay, that's why loose connection is the same like open circuit. The current cannot flow through this wire and energize the MC or agitator contactor coil. That's why it because of this. The three phase contactor switch is unable to trigger to close, hence no current can flow through through this three phase line to the agitator to turn on the agitator. Okay, right? So now we have checked here. Now we need to check TB118. TB118 for any loose connection or open circuit. Okay, so TB118, no loose connection. This no loose connection. And TB118 to connected to TB223. TB223 here. You can check for any loose connection. TB223, no loose connection. TB223, no loose connection. And we know TB223 branch out into two paths. One is a TR12 here, TR12 here. Okay, we know TR1 or timer relay one able to operate as per normal, meaning there is no loose connection or open circuit. That's why current can flow through the wire to energize TR1 timer relay. So there is another path for current to flow. There is a TB215 here. TB215 here. Okay. If finally supply the current to agitator point one, agitator point one. Okay. Either the wire or the device, either there is a loose termination or the there is an open circuit on the wire or the agitator lighting itself. So let's check the connection at TB215. TB215, no loose connection. Here, no loose connection. And the agitator one, no loose connection. Maybe we can measure the resistance across the load. Agitator lighting. We want an open. Make sure there's an open load. That means there's an open circuit. So we have to change, OK? There's a resistance showing that there is no more open circuit in the agitator lighting. Okay, now normalize the multimeter, remove the lockout takeout, turn on the switch, and drain the fluid from the vaser, and we run the process and measure everything working fine, smoothly, without any issue. Before we hand over to system owner. Okay, start the process. Now intake 1 lighting turn on. Followed by intake 2 lighting. Okay. When we reach 85%, then it will off. Then agitator lighting will turn on. Followed by heater after 5 seconds. Yes, agitator lighting is turned on. The agitator contactor is switched to close. Current supposed to flow inside the agitator. However, I do not hear any agitator sound. That means there actually no current supply to agitator. Let's check the volt, the current from the agitator contactor output. Zero ampere, zero ampere, zero ampere. Strange. Don't tell me there's an open circuit across three phase. That is quite rare and quite important impossible how about this 
Oh, oh. Okay. Something wrong with that. How about pump? Zero. Zero ampere. Zero ampere. This is quite strange because usually we only find one phase open or two phases open. We rarely encounter where three phase circuit open at the same time. So most likely there is no incoming power supply. So for this case, try to measure line to line voltage. Zero. Okay, zero volt. Zero volt. There is no incoming power supply. How about this one? Zero volt. Zero volt. Hmm, something is wrong. So, how about the incoming power supply? Okay, we know that the incoming power supply line 1, line 2, line 3 connected to TB1, 2, 3. So, we measure the incoming power supply. There is incoming power supply. There is incoming power supply. So, why is the problem? Maybe we can press the EMO first. Okay, then as we know, okay, for three phase circuit, if you want for three phase circuit, we can check the phase voltage when the line end is open, like in this case, all this line end is open. How we know by looking at the contactor button which is popping up, meaning is this in normally open state. So this line end is open, we can measure the phase voltage. And when uh, there is no when there is no then when the, the end of the line is not open then we have to measure line to line voltage so I encourage we always measure line to line voltage and also phase voltage for three phase circuit okay so that to get the overall result for proper analysis this is the voltage here there is no voltage here, there is no voltage here, strange. That means the fuse is okay, there is no voltage, there is voltage, no voltage, no voltage, strange. Hmm? It's quite strange, here no voltage. Quite rare it happened like that. Okay, in conclusion, we found that this fuse, these two fuses and these two fuses do not receive any incoming voltage or power supply something wrong with that okay never mind we need to check the maybe there is a open circuit on the wire or there is a loose termination or both so we need to count the main power supply perform the local take out verify local take out is done properly and then by we had to analyze it through the wiring diagram we know that there is no incoming power supply to fuse 91 and these two fuses here and these two fuses here when we measure the incoming power supply there is power supply across these three phases okay so okay we know that there's no incoming power supply and this line come from tb13 tb13 here supply to fuse 91 here okay and the uh, line 3 also supply to fuse 31 here fuse 31 which is applied to fuse 6 1 here. So, most likely, okay, there is a loose termination here. Loose termination here is no different from open circuit. That's why the current from L3, when reached here, it, it was not able to supply to both the path, okay, to the fuse 9 1 and also fuse 3 1 and also fuse 6 1. Most likely, there is a loose termination here. As for the this fuse, fuse 51, actually connected to from fuse 21 here, and this actually connected from TB12 here, TB12. So, most likely, okay, when current reach here, it will branch out into two paths one to the fuse 81. Here is a fuse 81, which is okay. When we measure, there is a voltage here. So, most likely, there is no loose termination here. So, the possible causes is fuse to one okay tb12 to fuse to one here this wire having open circuit that's why no current supply to fuse to one and fuse 51 okay 
we start to check the loose termination at TB13 first. Okay, D, TB3, TB13. Yeah, there's a loose connection. And also we check the wire condition. Yeah, there's well, I mean open circuit. So we need to replace the wire. Okay, we can double check again to ensure there's no open circuit. Yeah, zero ohm mean the wire do not have any open circuit. So normalize all the wiring connection, normalize the multimeter, okay, and then remove the lockout takeout, turn on. And then we will run the process. First drain the waste, drain the fluid, and then start the process. Hopefully this time do not have any issue again and the process able to complete successfully. Okay, start the process. Maybe we can measure the current. Ah, there is an agitator sound. Hey, what is wrong? Oh, sorry, the pump. Pump is able to run. Okay, most likely everything is okay because the water able to pump up to the next stage. See the result here? Pass.